Hello, my name is Olaf Bachtwer. I'm a senior advisor in technology with Petoro. I'm going to present to you today a talk about seismic surveillance for reservoir delivery. This is going to be quite a bit about the permanent seismic array and use of them because I had a role with BP in Norway as a project leader for their permanent installation at the Valhall field. The first example of seismic surveillance for reservoir delivery I heard about was from the freight gas field in the North Sea. 2D seismic lines were acquired in 79, 81 and 83 and were used to map the changes in gas liquid contact due to production. The study concluded with a major update of the reservoir model resulted in the drilling of additional wells and led to an extended field life. In the late 80s, improved marine tow streamer technology and navigation systems resulted in significant uplift in the quality of 3D seismic surveys. Earlier surveys were repeated to improve resolution and structural definition. In some of these fields, these repeated uh, 3D surveys allowed for studying production-induced changes over time. Changes consistent with expected seismic responses were indeed observed. By the mid-90s, 4D or time-lapse seismic was established as a commercial seismic surveillance technology and become increasingly used. The successful application at no across North Sea fields like Gulfax, Magnus, Fortis and Drogen inspired a worldwide interest. Why are we doing seismic surveillance? This graph shows the idealized production profile for reservoir development. The purpose of seismic surveillance is to acquire data which by itself or most often combined with other production data are used to better define the reservoir and hence to reduce uncertainties and thereby also the cost of developing the field. The desired and most often likely outcome is increased production and recovery. Many of the early marine 4D seismic successes were linked to the discovery of undrained or unswept compartment in water flooded field. Additional commercial infill locations were found and led to commercial successes. Today, seismic surveillance is more and more used to early in the field life to understand the reservoir plumbing and to secure the delivery of sanctioned reserve. However, the first 3D seismic surveillance was actually across a field under enhanced oil recovery. The Holt Reservoir in the northern part of Texas is recognized as the first reservoir where a 4D seismic survey was acquired. In 1982, 182 geophones were buried into the ground. 165 shots were fired in drilled holes 12 meters apart. The objective of the project was to demonstrate that reflection seismic surveying could be used to monitor the progress of an EOR process. And indeed, these three seismic sections shows high quality results. From the top, we see the seismic responses from the different stages during a fire, flo fire fluid process, the pre-burn, mid-burn and the post-burn phase. This successful outcome is definitely related to the high geometrical repeatability of receivers and sources. The receivers were permanently placed and the source was fired from exactly the same position for all service. In 1995, BP, Shell and Schlumberger brought this concept to marine settings in the Foynaven Active Reservoir Management Project. Six seismic cables containing hydrophone sensors were permanently placed on the seabed. The purpose was to assist the Foynaven asset team in managing the reservoir and in comparing different uh, technology for seismic surveillance. The Foynaven project demonstrated that it was feasible to build, install and operate a permanent seabed receiver system for seismic reservoir monitor in deep water. This was a stepping stone towards the world's first field-wide permanently installed four-component seabed array at the Valhall field in 2003. Let's hear from the BP Norway's Valhall team presenting this project and its benefit in a video prepared for the reception of the OTC's Distinguished Achievement Award in 2011. Four D seismic has become a standard tool in our industry. The principle is that two or more seismic surveys are required several years apart to reveal how fluids have moved and where production's been coming from from within our fields. 
BP Norway took this technology a step further by installing the world's first full-field permanent seismic monitoring system at our Valhall field. This work is a great example of how good cooperation between in-house research and external service partners can create significant value for an asset through optimising the positioning of new wells and hence enhancing production. It is a great pleasure to introduce the Valhall subsurface team that has implemented and applied an entirely new way of delivering seismic surveillance. In 2003, we placed 10,000 seismic sensors across the Valhall field. 120 km of seismic cables was trenched into the seabed and connected to a data recording system on the platform. Two times a year, one of the field supply vessels will tow a seismic source and place this on exactly the same 53,000 positions where it will transmit sound waves into the earth. The reflected seismic signal is sent to a high-performance computing center where the 4D seismic images are constructed. The final images are loaded into specialized application programs for detailed analysis and made available to the subsurface team via web browser used for managing the field. In April 2008, we started injecting water in a new well. The intention was to push the oil around the well to the nearby producers. Soon we observed increased water in one of the producers, so we had concerns that the injection water had found a way through cracks into the producer. In October, we planned to enter the well to shut off injection in one part and open in another. At the same time, new seismic images became available, revealing what was going on in the reservoir during this period. It showed that the injection worked exactly as planned. So we cancelled the intervention, saved over 1 million US dollars, but most importantly, we reduced the risk of the water finding its way to another producer through an inactive well bore. Due to a complex overburden, the 4D seismic image in the central part of the reservoir used to be poor. The permanent seismic system allowed the use of a novel technique called full waveform inversion, leading to stunning improvements in the 4D images. We get frequent 4D data and we now are able to track pressure and saturation away from the injectors. In this case, we see how injection is impacted by the reservoir being partly broken up by faults. We see how the pressure and saturation build up before spilling over into the adjacent block. One of my responsibilities is to predict the pressure ahead of the bit when we drill in the reservoir. Especially when drilling into an area where we inject water, this might be a challenge as variations in thickness and small faults will impact how the pressure varies away from the well. The seismic 4D images help me to understand where I have pressure barriers or baffles. This helps me to estimate the pressure along the 1 to 2 km long horizontal section and ensure that this is within the acceptable limits. These are a few of the more than 50 documented cases in which we have used this technology. Each has captured value, saving costs of up to several millions of dollars each time. Following the success at Valhall, just 30 km further to the north, ConocoPhillips installed a 200 km long field-wide permanent seismic array across the Ecofisk field in 2010. Frequent surveying and improved 4D seismic fidelity was the business driver behind this installation. With seven surveys acquired within three and a half years, and this comparison between a high-end towed streamer survey and the results from the permanent array of a similar but different time period, this objective appears to have been met. Statel are currently installing permanent seismic cable system across the Snorra and the Grana field. 700 km seismic array cables will be covering an area of 240 square km. By investing half a billion dollars, Statel expects in return of $3 billion or 30 million barrels of extra oil. Use of permanent recording system removes the geometrical repeatability challenges of the retrieval system. The upfront cost of installing a permanent system is higher. However, the repeat surveys are only a fraction of the cost which favors frequent surveying. The appreciation of the sensitivity of seismic travel times to give mechanical effects or production-induced stress state changes outside the reservoir have advanced significantly in the last 10 years. 
Time shifts associated with subsidence across highly compressible reservoir rocks like Ekofisk and Valhall was seen to be considerably larger than estimated strain just above the reservoir. And it was realized that the effect of velocity changes due to stretches or unloading in the overburden could be several times larger than the compaction in the reservoir. The sensitivity of these time shifts between subsequent surveys from permanent system is around a quarter of a millisecond. Assuming that the change in travel time above the reservoir during a period of production could be five times larger than the strain across the reservoir implies that we could be able to pick up the effects of only five centimeters of deformation. To the left we see a seismic section crossing a horizontal wall and we see the effects of unloading in the middle as under our bridge. While the load is transferred to the edges or to the stress pillars, the time shift changes due to unloading is starting out around plus minus one millisecond. But underneath the predicted pillars, we see a subtle effect of around a quarter millisecond. Can this be trusted? The beauty of frequent or continuous surveillance is that there is a new survey soon after. In this case, within three months. This survey confirms the trends and clearly adds to the confidence in our interpretation. By having three surveys over a short period of time, we can also quantify the uncertainties in the observation. The observation outside the reservoir provides an additional attribute to help tracking the production effects in the reservoir, but the ability to track the mechanical effects in the overburden is also valuable for avoiding dwelling problems linked to the stress stage changes. The well-known example of azimuthal changes in shear wave velocity in the shallow overburden at Valhall is linked to the simple stress state changes associated with subsidence. The effects are picked up in this case by reflected converter waves, waves that are converted from P-wave energy to S-wave at a reflector and returning as shear waves. A permanent recording system may also be used to record natural background or ambient noise. By cross-correlating ambient noise, it has been possible to isolate coherent seismic energy or shelter waves. These interface waves propagates with a limited depth of penetration below the seabed. Although the noise is broadband, it has only the limited properties required for interferometry over a limited frequency range, up to 2 Hz. At this low frequency, the shelter waves do penetrate the top few hundred meters. As we can see from these inverted results, the shoulder waves appear to deduce the same anisotropy effect as seen by the shear waves from an active survey. BP has acquired 70 surveys across the Valhall field, each providing 5 to 10 basic 3D migrated stack volumes, which are matched against all other cubes of similar type. There are 136 ways of combining 17 volumes. How do they deal with all these data? Automated processes and customized workflows have been introduced to facilitate effective analysis and data management. The first couple of surveys are typically analyzed carefully on an interactive workstation, and key reference horizons and attribute extraction methodology are established. The rest of simulator combined with a simulator to seismic response module are used in this work. And if the model response differ, the model is updated accordingly. When the workflow is established, it is useful to code this up using scripting. This saves time, the workflow is repeatable, and the script might be made to also include output on the necessary documentation. The process is quick to reproduce or upgrade if needed. Since all the results might be easily regenerated, the only data set that needs to be safeguarded is the final delivery from every survey. These are normally limited to a dozen of volume. While the analysis can easily generate thousands of intermediate volumes, surfaces and images. The automated workflows also include automatic loading of data to workstation for detailed analysis and compilation or presentation material to be included in decision support documents. Frequent seismic surveillance open for new and innovative ways to analyze the data. A series of differences 
built from changes between surveys in a single map position, may be correlated with the accumulated changes in produced volumes in one well. The combination of production during time intervals between 10 surveys gives a series of 45 values. This image shows the result from analyzing 10 subsequent surveys from the well hole field. Both acoustic impedance and time shift attributes in parts of the map shows remarkable correlation to production in wells. In this case, there are two distinct groups of wells, each linked to a different area on the map. Each group of wells was put on stream at the same time and followed the same production cycle. Uniting time-lapse seismic data and well data this way helps defining the area which are connected and influenced by production and injection from a well or a group of wells. Presenting the results from a time-lapse study differently sometimes makes the result more easily integrated with other data. For instance, we might convert the map changes along a horizontal well into relative volumes or inflow or injection into the wells. In this case, we have spaced out perforation and we can create an analog to a PLT display that we can call production tracking plot. And the production tracking plot mimics quite well the results seen by running a production logging tool that actually measure the flow in the well. Seismic surveillance has manifested itself as an important technology for safely producing more from our oil and gas reservoir. At the Norwegian continental shelf, an estimate made in 2010 states that an investment in 4D seismic in the order of half to $1 billion has generated close to 4 billion in the 10 years period since the turn of the millennium. Today, many oil and gas reservoirs have a high number of repeated seismic surveys acquired across them. We continuously see impressive 4D images result from marine tow streamer, ocean bottom recordings, and on land. The main objective of 4D seismic used to be to produce one off differences map, helping to identify additional infill well location. Today, seismic surveillance has grown beyond this and is becoming an integrated tool for managing the reservoir. Use of continuous or permanent seismic monitoring plays an important role in this development. It offers high quality, frequent survey and fast turnaround and a close line of sight to the end delivery, which is to provide a sound technical basis for the business decisions. Thank you.